You are listening to I Am Refocused Radio with your host, Shamaya Reed. This show is designed to inspire you to live your purpose and regain your focus. And now, here's your host, Shamaya Reed. Hey, welcome to I Am Refocused Radio. We are here once again. Today, we have another amazing show. We're going to talk to an amazing person, Tim Hill. He is all about great things. He has a book that we're going to be talking about later in the show. But before we get into that, we're going to talk about his amazing military career. And he is someone that I think is going to be very interesting to talk to on the show because he's someone that does a lot of things. But most importantly, he's done amazing things in his life. He's done things with leadership, building communities, and also just being an inspiration. So first and foremost, I just want to welcome you to the show, Tim, and say, how you doing, man? Thank you very much for having me on, Shmar. So, man, it's a pleasure I, to be here. I want to thank you for taking time, your schedule of being with us today, but I want to learn everything about your military career because you're from the UK, and yep. I would love for you to give us the just the backstory of what got you inspired to join the military and just your journey. Well, it started when, um, when I couldn't get into uh, an agricultural boarding school at the age of 10. Um, I failed the entrance, exam, the entrance exam fairly miserably, to be honest. So I thought I'd go and join the army. And the first time I went to join the army, I was only 14 and three quarters which is the earliest you can go and take the test to join the army in in, in Great Britain. Um, and I failed that miserably as well. And a recruiting sergeant, he says to me, son, if you can't read and write proper like what I does, you've got no chance of getting in the army. You better go and buck your ideas up and learn something. So I did. I, uh, I went away that weekend. I gave myself a really stern talking to. Went to school the, the following week on a Monday and I went to every class. Now, half of the teachers thought I was a new student because I'd done an awful lot of bunking off. Anyway, I knuckled down, worked really hard for the next six months or so, went back with a, a friend to the recruiting office. Uh, we took the test. Recruiting officer says, hey, boys, you do the test. I've got to pop out and do something. So my mate gave us a few of the answers, and uh, lo and behold, I managed to get a, a place as a junior soldier in the Royal Anglian Regiment. Uh, and I joined the army on the 5th of August, 1974. And I never looked back. And when you got out, what was some of the things that, that would never fade away as far as things that you learned with your journey being in the military? What was some of the valuable lessons that you learned while you was in? Well, the British army worked to a set of values and standards. And I've been working to those all my life. I mean, I left the army on the the fourth of April, twenty eighteen. So I did a a long and so fairly distinguished career. <laughs> Although I didn't get the long service and good co conduct medal, um, and that's for a reason. I got caught. <laughs> I only got caught but once, but I got caught. So uh, and that prevented me from getting that medal. But I've got a lot, a lot of other medals. Um, but those values and standards are key to, to making me the man that I am today, I guess. Um, they teach me respect, um, integrity, loyalty, um, courage, discipline. Um, so I've, I've lived by those all my life. And... Um, those are lessons that I take with me, and those are the lessons I try and pass on. I try and be an inspiration to other people. In fact, I'll give you a little story. Last week, I was at a veterans meeting um, here where I live, and there was a camera crew came along because last year we had a, a national uh, census, and one of the questions on there is where, whether you were a, a veteran and where you lived. And there's two hot spots in the United Kingdom where there's a big cluster of um, veterans. One is up in the north of the country in a place called Richmond, and the other one is in Gosport, where I live. So there's a, a lot of veterans in, in the town. So this camera crew was there to sort of talk with the 
uh, the CEO of the Veterans Outreach Support, who uh, is this charity that, that looks after veterans, um, not just veterans with need, but just generally looking after veterans, trying to keep us in touch with each other. The camera crew um, asked if they wanted to, if any of us wanted to talk. So I was put my hand up and uh, cut a long story short, they came to my studio and um, gave an, uh, had an interview with me. And on the, the nightly news, nationwide news, this is, um, that piece went out shortly after uh, a guy up in the Midlands uh, of, of the UK contacted me and said he was really having trouble. He didn't know where to turn. Um, I have a friend up in that neck of the woods. I put them in touch. He's now helping him out. So from that one interview, we know we've helped one person. And that's possible. That's my mission in life is to, to help other veterans um, with that are suffering from mental health problems, that are suffering from PTSD particularly. Um, so from that point of view, it, it was a real Billy bonus and a real um, a real buzz to get uh, this guy contact me and to be able to help him. So I'm really, really proud of that that one incident. So for me, it's all about helping others. And that's all I've done all my life, really, help others. Once again, you listen to Unreal Focus Radio. We're talking to our special guest, Tim Hill and his amazing military career. He also has a podcast, you see on his shirt, the Tim Hill podcast. He interviews amazing people as well and having them share their extraordinary stories. He also wrote a book that we will be talking about later in the show. The book is called Pod Match Host Mastery, a guide to finding interesting guests and growing your show by learning from top Pod Match host members. So that's something you guys want to stick around for. But I want to go back to the point where you talk about uh, veterans, because here in yeah. the United States, we we deeply care about veterans, those who serve. And I'm sure it's the same feeling where you are as well. What are some of the programs that are available? Because uh, you mentioned about uh, that there's programs that you, you tended to. What are some of the programs out there that, that helps vet, veterans to get the help that they need? Well, in the UK, um, they're roughly around, it fluctuates a little bit, but there's roughly around about 2,000 charities that are just set up to help veterans. They come and go a little bit, but there, there are some some of the larger ones that, that help all the time, like Help for Heroes, um, Blesma, which is the, 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 the um, limbless guys. There's... Um, um, just one thing of combat stress there's the, the VOS which is the veterans outreach support which is uh, one I go along to we have another one where we just just a bunch of veterans that meet up called um, Buns and Banter once a month um, there's an outreach uh, across in Portsmouth once a month and they have lots of different agencies come in so the Veterans UK come in there's SAFA comes in, which is a soldier service airmen's uh, association that help veterans. So there's lots and lots of um, help out there. And it just needs that little bit of encouragement to go and seek that help. And it, it, the main thing is recognising it in yourself. If, if, if you're not feeling 100%, if you're not feeling comfortable, um, have a look at yourself. If you can recognise in yourself that there's that you've got a problem, you're halfway there to solving it or helping helping it. Um, and I think that's the key is is recognise that you've got a problem and then seek the help. Um, so many veterans um, end up on the streets. They end up in broken relationships because they try and bottle it up. And and bottling up is the worst thing you can possibly do. Um, recognise that you've got a problem, speak to people about it, talk to your loved ones. And, and that's real. the real key, is talk to your loved ones. They're the ones that say, uh, they're the ones that will support you through thick and thin. But if you if you try to bottle it up and, and you're, just, you're just making a rod for your own back, really, 
Um, and that's what we're trying to get across is is to for veterans to to understand that, that they are different to civilians and and civilians don't understand an awful lot of the time what a veteran's been through and um i had that problem myself that's that's one of the things i spoke about on this 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 um interview um i had a little bit of a wobble a while ago where um i i needed a little bit of support i went to the doctor to get referred he referred me on to a local um counselor when the sort of counselor didn't understand the military mindset uh wasn't an awful lot of help for me yes he was a great professional um but he didn't understand my problems um i ended up speaking to some friends and some mates and uh and now i'm okay but it it, it took that little bit of a catalyst to to go and seek some help uh, and and i recognized him myself because my last job in the army funny enough i was a welfare officer for for eight years uh, in London Central Garrison, so I was, I was a coordinator for for PTSD uh, in, in the garrison, um, and I, I also I was looking after people's welfare, so I understood some of the complex issues that guys get. So, <laughs> and it wasn't until I left the military and I'd been out a, a couple of years that um, it, it it finally come home and sort of bit me in the backside should we say <laughs> it caught up with me yeah i like what you said earlier about not allowing things to bottle up because <clears throat> whether yeah. you're military or non-military i think people yeah. can get stuck in a way where they don't release things that they need to release and i think it's healthy to if you do Absolutely. need help go seek that professional yeah. uh as soon as you can because it's like you can't light someone's candle if yours is not lit and you have yeah. to deal with those things so that way you can be a positive impact in your community and that's what you're doing you're doing that with uh you have a book that we're going to talk to uh talk about later but your podcast the tim hill podcast you kind of explore yeah. that same thing what is uh some of the type of guests that you search for to get on your show well, I'll just take you back a little bit and how I actually got into the podcasting in the first place. Um, I was working on Ancestry and I, I came across my great grandfather, who was a chief stoker in the Royal Navy. And he lived about three miles from where I live now. He died back in 1930. When we got into lockdown, um, I was drinking a little bit too much for my own good. And I, I sort of thought, I need to do something. To, to be just cured of boredom. I thought, well, my granddad's story is lost forever. It's never going to be able to be told because it's gone. If I don't tell my story, that's going to be gone as well. So that's how I started a podcast. So I started recording my life. So there's 24 half an hour episodes of my life. So, so that any of the listeners out there that are suffering from insomnia, <laughs> get up to have a listen to that. Put them to sleep in minutes. If not, it might give you a few nightmares. <laughs> that's that's a good one. But I got to the, the end of my life and I did a couple of extra uh, episodes of more in-depth stuff that I'd done. And I thought, we're still in lockdown. What do I do now? Well, why don't I start telling other people's stories? Uh, so so we leave a legacy for future generations. So the first person I turned to was my mother. And um, I got her story. And I've gone on from there. And I'm now just released episode 148 of other people. I think somewhere about there anyway. I think there's, there's 240 episodes knocking around. <laughs> See, that's and what... they're, they're available on all the major podcasts platforms and there's an awful lot i think from number 42 onwards um they're now available on youtube as well that's what i like about podcasting because it's really interesting the wave of podcasts that are coming out but also what you're touching on 
your people now have the ability to listen to all these stories from not just their own country, but basically around yeah. the world. There's so many people, so many stories of success, of failure, of wisdom, well, what you learn from. I say I was, I've spoken to an awful lot of military type people, but I've also spoke spoken to a lot of um, other people from around the world. I've had people from Australia, I've had people from the Far East, the Middle East, um, Europe, and uh, North America and Canada. Um, lots and lots of people, and everybody's got a fascinating story. And I have a basic format to my show where I ask people when and where they were born. I ask them about their schooling, um, the types of school they went to. Um, I ask them to describe what it was like where they grew up. Um, so we get an idea of their background. And then we look at their work life history and we run through that and um, we rock out. We, we, we generally pull out an awful lot of little nuggets of fantastic information. Uh, and then we'll end up talking about something that uh, where the conversation takes us, and it's taken us to some fantastic places. Once again, um, and I, I just love talking to people. Once again, less time we focus radio talking to our guest Tim Hill, and man, the uh, book that we I promise we will get to the title of the book that is really doing great right now on Amazon. I mean, you got great reviews. Yeah, there it is. It's, Talk to uh, us about this amazing book, Podmas Host Mastery. This is something I think a lot of people who are aspiring to be a host or maybe a guest in the future, because yeah, you have another book on there's, that. There's an accompanying book to it as well. There's, there's the guest pod mastery. Um, in fact, I've got copies of both of them. <laughs> there you go. So there's two books. Uh, they're both number one on uh, as Amazon bestsellers. There's 16 uh, authors that have contributed to each book. And if you're looking for, um, if you want to get into to podcasting where you're having guests or you want to be a host, sign up for Podmatch. It is a brilliant platform. It's the best pod matching platform out there. There's lots of support for it. There's, there's, I don't know. I think there's about 40,000 members and an inexhaustible um, <laughs> amount of people that you can contact with. Um, and it is a really good platform. So I encourage anybody, if they want to get into this game, that's where to start. Get the books, have a read up, and then, um, and then go for it. And you provide step-by-step -step strategies for people who pick up either one of those books to be, whether it's a better guest or to be a better host. When, when, you, when you have gained a lot of experience for yourself with your own platform, what's yeah. some of the core ingredients that you've been able to take away just with your experience interviewing so many different people for so many different backgrounds? Well, one of the key things, if, you, if you're a host, the key to being a really good host is you've got two ears, one mouth, use them in that portion, listen to what the person's talking about, focus your whole attention on that person because that's the, the way that you get the best out of a guest is if you treat them that they're the only person in the world that you're listening to at that time and really engage with, with what they're saying ask them questions ask them meaningful questions don't try and um try and fluff your way through i have a particular way of, of doing it i i like to go in cold um uh, that i mean I, I i have a rough idea of the person i'm going to talk to and that's about it and I, I, I start a conversation off, I have that, that basic format and I give my 100% concentration on that person while we're talking. And it's amazing how quickly uh, an hour of flash by and you barely scratch the surface. Um, 
but it's a, it's a natural conversation and that's what I like about it. And I learn so much from people. It was amazing is, uh, if I could share my experience with Pi Match is there's a common thread with, with a lot of great guests and hosts and you touched on them. Uh, number one is a good listener. Number two is a person who thinks deeply about the person they're talking to. And number three is simply growing and being yourself. Cause the more you're yourself, the more your fingerprint touches other lives. And the more it does that, the more meaning it has. I just literally talked to someone like 30 minutes ago and <clears throat> she's a life coach and she talks about like, okay, if there's something I can't do for a client, like for example, she said anyone who needs therapy or anything like that, she lets them know right away, hey, before we go further with my services, you need to go see a professional in this area. And I think part of everything that we do in life is knowing what are our weak points and then what are our strength, uh, our strong points and knowing when to adjust. And the more we do that, the better life becomes. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. Um, and and at the end of the day, it, it's just develop your own listening skills because that's the key to being a good host is having good listening skills and understanding what the person is that you're speaking to is saying. Uh, and, and, and then just to, to clarify things, just go over some of the stuff that you've just spoken about. And uh, it, it, it leaves them feeling really good about themselves. It leaves you feeling good about yourself. And when it goes out as a podcast, people listening will connect with that. And and my, my podcast at the moment, I'm just approaching, I think, around about 16,000 downloads in the last um, two and a half years. That's awesome. With, with I think it's, I think it's about two hundred and forty episodes that have gone out. <laughs> Somewhere around about that. That's not bad at I all. Don't really, I don't really check the numbers that often. <laughs> that's that's great results because I think when people understand exactly what the host is trying to deliver. Now they know exactly what to expect when they hear new guests. They know that some kind of value is going to come across from the other person who is basically a guest in the house. But someone gave me some really good advice. And when I first started, I was like, worry about the wrong things. You know, how many downloads am I getting? How many people am I reaching? You know, all this stuff that, you know, is starting to become, you know, kind of unnecessary at this point. But when you start focusing on who can I help? Who can I inspire? How can I get this guest to give someone a blueprint who may need that blueprint to unlock that whatever they're stuck in, unlock that door yeah. so that way they can grow and that they can take action steps. Okay, Tim did this, he did that, he learned from this. Boom, I'm going to start doing that today. And then before you know it, they get to, like we touched on earlier in the show, they get to light the next person's candle and spread that light because that's what we need in this world is people who can share the stories and spread that Absolutely. light of positivity, but also real life situations that will help them grow. Yeah. I, th I think the real key to take from it is, is, don't get hung up on numbers at all. Concentrate on the quality of the content that you're pushing out. It's quite funny. I, I, I get asked quite often, who's my avatar? Who is my my ideal target audience? And my answer, <laughs> you'll love this, is my target audience, my avatar, hasn't been born yet. Wow. People think, what? Precisely that. This is what I do is it's all about leaving a legacy for future generations. So quite often, I mean, you'll see it with your own kids, your own grandkids. 
they don't care what you're doing, what you've done with your life until it's too late, when you're gone. And then slightly later in life, they well, I wish I spoke to my granddad about that or wish I'd sort of taken a bit more notice of what my parents did. It's not until it's too late that people want to know what their their relations or their their parents, their grandparents, their great grandparents did with their lives. And this is what it's all about. So my avatars hasn't been born yet. It's for future generations of 50, 100 years time. They can look back at what we did in this period of time. We can't really do it much. Yes, you can you can look back in history a bit and see what famous people did, but not ordinary people. And ordinary people have had some extraordinary stories. They really have. And that's the thing that I try and bring out in my podcasts. Once again, and generally it does. There's, I mean, some fantastic stories out there. Once again, listen to Army Focus Radio talking to our guest, Tim Hill. And man, we, we are talking about a lot of great things, not just your military career. We're talking about service. We're talking about helping people. We're talking about uh, just treating others the way you would want to be treated. That's the golden rule right there. But the other thing is you talk about the future. And I think that's important. The next generation is, uh, how can you paint this? They're, they're the next one up to swing the bat, if you will. They're the next one yeah. up to take the shot, take the risk, and and lead when it's time for them to be the leaders. Someone listen right now, and they're like, all right, mm. what can I do to be a better leader? You, you can't change history. You can learn from history. You can't change it. You can make history, but you can't change it. <laughs> so that's that's the key to take. I mean, history is is happening today now. This this podcast or this this conversation that we have is going to be there in the annuals of history, and people can look back at this in years to come and think, "Wow," or hmm, "Okay." <laughs> what can we take from that? <laughs> but this is this is this this time period and this is this is us. Um and and I mean you look go back twenty years, mobile phones were like massive great big bricks. Nowadays it's it's a tiny little thing. Look how technology's come on. When I was a kid, we didn't have the internet. We didn't have mobile phones, didn't have computers. In fact, I didn't see a television until I was 12. <laughs> wow. So now they can I, watch it. I was born in I was born in the 50s. <laughs> now they can watch Baby Shark now. So it's like <laughs> times have yeah. changed. It's it's crazy. But yeah, with with all that said, what I'm getting from what you just talking about is being able to adapt with time. Not not staying stuck. And what I mean by that is not making excuses for why you can't change. Because we, we can't say all of us, that's a disclaimer, but a lot of us can look for inspiration. And as someone told me last week, um, it doesn't matter how much inspiration I give you. It doesn't matter uh, all the stories I tell you. It doesn't matter all the secrets I tell you toward success. What matters is what you do with it. Because until you do something, you still have nothing. Until you plant the seed, you're still looking for answers. Sometimes it just takes us to plant one seed to get the full crop. But we are so busy worrying about what if, or maybe I'm not good enough or maybe I can't change, or maybe I can't, whatever, fill in the blank. With your personal experience, what did it take for you to make that decision, to make that move, plant those seeds, and take action? I think for me, personally, it's just doing it. I think you have to be comfortable with your, yourself. 
You have to be comfortable in your own skin. Lots and lots of people don't like the sound of their own voice when they're recording. You need to get over that. You need to accept who you are. You need to love yourself and you need to love what you're doing. The day I stop enjoying doing what I'm doing, I'll stop it. As a simple as that. <laughs> if, 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 I, if I'm no longer enjoying what I'm doing, I'll just stop and find something else. That's the key. It's, it's doing what you love. And I'm, I'm fortunate. I'm retired. I mean, I had 44 years in the army. Um, I've seen and done so much and I've taken so many different liberties. Um, I've got a million stories I could tell. Um, and I've just had a, 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 an awesome life. Um, and I've got no regrets. I mean, underneath this gorgeous exterior, there's an absolute train wreck going on. But <laughs> I get up every day. Sometimes I struggle at getting up every day. Um, I mean, constantly in pain. But it's 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 just being thankful that I'm alive for another day to to take some more liberties and and have some more fun. And that's what I do. I mean, this is fun. I love talking to people. I love telling people about my life. I love hearing about other people's lives. And if I can if I can just reach out to somebody in the future that listens to some of this stuff uh, and and inspires them, then I've, I've, I've left a legacy. And that's it. That's what I do. That's what I love. And I think that's what the driving force. Um, and that's how I got into it in the first place, is wanting to leave a legacy for future generations. Once again, we've been talking to our Special guest today, Tim Hill here on, on Refocus Radio. Man, go check out his podcast. I'm gonna give that to you again. The Tim Hill podcast. You can get it anywhere you hear one. I mean, all the platforms. That means iTunes, Spotify, iHeartRadio, everywhere you can find one. Also get his books. He has more than one. He has some amazing ones specifically about pod match and all about being a better host and also being a better guest and some of the strategic ways you can really prep yourself to not just be a super rock star on interviews but also be a great host that can make people shine so once again i want to say thanks to you tim uh for not just being on the show but also sharing your life story and sharing the wisdom that you gain from it well i say people can find us on youtube if they just played tim hill nine I'll come across the channel if they put in the, the podcast app, uh, Ordinary People's Extraordinary Stories, you'll find the po podcast and they, they are awesome. Every single one of them is different and every single one of them is amazing. Well, once again, I want to say thanks to our guest, Tim Hill, for not just being a pretty cool guest, but just being down to earth and being himself. With that, I want to say thank you for your time, for spending out of your busy schedule, a little time with Omni Focus Radio. Thank you so much for having me.